Okay, welcome back to the Biblical Truth of Our Hymns. Today, have thy own way, Lord. And this is one of them hymns, once you hear the instrumental, it just comes to the tip of your tongue. And it stays with you all day. I mean, after doing this, I mean, how long today? <coughs> Excuse me. You're going to be, have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way, I can't sing. So 1902, Adelaide, A-D-E-L-A-I-D-E, -A, -E, a Pollard, was hoping to go to Africa as a missionary, but found herself unable to raise the needed funds to make the journey. Greatly discouraged, she attended a prayer service one evening, and as she sat there, she overheard an elderly woman say, in quote, it really doesn't matter what you do with us, Lord. That's a bold statement. Just have your own way with our lives. End of quote. That's the problem. That's the problem with modern Christianity. I'll have it my way, Lord. I guarantee that this hymn, Have Thine Own Way, is not sung in many modern churches. Maybe even modern, I don't mean uh, regular Baptist churches. Have thy own way, Lord, defeats today's expression of me, myself, and I. So this elderly woman says, it doesn't matter what you do with us, Lord. Just have your own way with our lives. This elderly woman inspired Pollard, and she sat down to... To the story with the potter of Jeremiah 18.3, scripture. Upon returning home that evening, she wrote four stanzas. We got four here before returning for the night. Five years later, George Sturbins wrote the tune titled Adelaide, I hope I'm saying that properly, to accompany the text. So we have a hymn with another remarkable study. And I'm amazed if I could just do When we decided to do Biblical Truth of Our Hymns, my main objective was to point out the, the hymns that are unscriptural. That was the main objective. I was going to figure we're going to do 10 hymns, 20 maybe, that would be it. But you know, then I decided last moment, the hymn book I have, and I'm not going to give the name of it, but I'm going to start with, I'm going to go through number one, and I'm only going to do the hymns that I know or popular, whether they're good or whether they're bad. And we're going to do it, and we're setting for it. And then today, have thine own way, Lord. Did you hear what I said? Have thine own way. Just in case you didn't get it. Even I struggle with that. Do you realize what would happen? What I was going to say, what could happen? No, what would happen if we Christians gave ourselves wholly to God without us interfering with God's work? What if we said, God, sincerely, have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way, and let him? That's a statement that just blows my mind. Because thou art the potter. Taking out Jeremiah. I am the clay. The potter. And, and, and Psalms talks about idols that can't see, can't smell, can't taste, can't talk, can't hear, can't move, can't touch. The potter is able to say this talk. The potter is able to smell the clay. The potter is able to see the clay. He can hear the machinery of the clay. He can touch and feel the clay. And the instrument that he's got on the wheels can't talk, can't see, can't smell, can't touch, can't hear. And it's the nation of Israel, but 
also for us Christians. And yet something that can't speak, don't we cry out to God, don't do that. Ow! That's not what I want to be. Your hands are getting warm from friction. Get yourself some more water, will you? No, 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 not like that. Oh, we just let we just let the Father God form us and use us. How many times has the Potter God taken this lump of clay, smush it all back, uh, make something else? Can't do that because it didn't turn out what do I want it to be. And I have a, I have a saying. I'd rather be a chamber pot for God than fine silver and porcelain silverware and dinnerware that's never used. I remember my grandma's house. She had the, she had the silverware in the in the case. She had the porcelain dishes in the in the cupboard and with the glass. And I think there was a light you could turn it on. And that was only taken out special occasion. A uh, uh, chamber pot, <laughs> quite used often. You know, I don't want to be used on special occasions by God. I want to be quite often used by God. And it has to be a chamber pot. I mean, I mean, for those of you who don't know what a chamber pot is, it's a really simple indoor plumbing. I mean, you can find a gold precious coin in the sewer. But who's going to go diving for it? Yeah, if God can reach over to his pantry and grab that vessel that's on the right there on the top. He doesn't open up any doors. He doesn't unlock anything. It, it's right there. Okay, I'll use this. Mold me and make me after thy will. How many times, and I've done it, maybe you don't, but how many times have I given God my great plan? I mean, God, you've got to listen to me. I mean, I've got it all settled. I've got it all planned out. And the Bible does say that God laughs. I guarantee God's up in heaven. Gabriel, you hear that kid? You hear that guy down there? That guy doesn't even know what's going to happen in an hour. But he's got next week and the week after and next year, he's got that all planned. If we're to be a great use for God, we've got to have thy own way, Lord. You're the potter. I'm just a lump of clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. What's the will of God in my life? Yeah, what is the will of God in our life? A will of God in our life is not for this. It's not the same will that you have, that God has for me, that God has for her, that God has for him, that God has for them. Not everybody has all the same things that everybody has. Not everybody can go to a, a farmer's market, open up and speak out loud and preach the gospel. And not anybody can just walk up to a complete stranger and carry a conversation about God. Not anybody can sit in a doctor's office on the doctor's table and anything else. Yeah, let me talk to you about your soul. Not everybody has the time that God's given them to pray for everything and everyone. I mean, there's all kinds of clay. And there's all kinds of vessels that can be wrought. 
while I am waiting, that's patient. I'm going to admit to you, one of my faults is patient. When I get off to God and say, God, you know, what stands between you and me? And almost instantly is patient. Along with my other sins. You got in, you you are impatient. Wait it out. Yielded and still. Still. That's not sitting there not being nothing. That's shut up and let God ow. I don't listen, I'm going through that right now. I'm a widower and I want God to bless me with another wife. And I won't shut up. I can't think of any pottery where you would need two vessels together and let a salt and pepper shaker. I don't know if you would do that. But God, I want to be I want to be a salt and I want to have a pepper shaker. That's my desire and my aim. You may be a vase, you may be a, for plants, you may be for dining, you may be for soup. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Search me and try me. Now, many will not do that. I do that. Examine me, God, and put me under the bright lights and see if there's any perfection. See if there's any trouble. See if there's any pro see if there's any cracks. Can I hold properly what you want me to hold? Am I gonna leak? Am I gonna break under the pressure? Am I shallow enough of what you want to put in me? Master today. Oh, we got rid of all this servitude. We can't have masters in servitude. We got to remove that out of our dictionary words. We got we can't use. And if God's not your master, then you will never be a disciple. You cannot say, "Oh, I'm a disciple," and don't have a master, because a disciple is one that's disciplined. For the use of God, who is our master. When you say, Look, Lord Jesus Christ, you are acknowledging that Jesus is your master. And yet, there are many people who use Lord and who, who reference God, well, I'm a disciple or I'm in discipleship, and God is not their master, and God is not. And when you take that lump of clay that's the subject of this hymn, I mean, imagine that lump of clay. He's on the spin, spinning wheel, and he walks up to, to the to the potter, smacks him in the face. That's not what I want. Now you take those hands, you make me to what I want to be. You know, I want to make a church. I want all kinds of people. I want them to look at me. I want the fame and fortune of of the Pope. I want to be a national preacher. God's like, I just want you to just handle a few people. I don't want you to go in the world. I'm the kind of person, I cause all kinds of trouble because I've got, in, in the clay that God's got me, I've got strict conviction. And they have rubbed against churches and pastors, but I don't care. If the Bible says it's wrong, it's wrong. If the Bible says it's worldly, it's worldly. I'm not doing it. I've got enough clay in me. I don't need any other worldliness. This world is not my home. Whiter than snow. Lord, wash me just now. I don't know if there's any clay out there, maybe Play-Doh, that's white. I don't remember any pottery is white unless it's been painted. And we're not talking about a, a, a pottery that's been painted. That's not what God does. And to be made whiter than snow, God says, come now, let us reason again. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be made as white as snow. 
If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The fact is, as a piece of pottery, a piece of clay, in or no, no, God don't put paint over you. God washes and cleanses all the impurities in me, all the sins in me, and I come out to be white, albino, through the blood of Jesus Christ. As in thy presence, humbly I bow. That's lacking today. Churches, all the, the, the big unit of, of people coming to religion, bowing before God. That's also saying he's the master. I've seen videos today with all this ruckus. They, they got black people. I don't know where they're... they're and I don't, I don't understand the complete movement, but they're having people come up to them and bowing down and kissing their feet, their shoes. Put a gun to my head. I ain't bowing down before no one. I ain't kissing nobody's foot. I'm not even worthy to bow down and, and do the logic of Jesus Christ, John the Baptist said. And yet Jesus Christ humbled himself and washed his disciples' feet as a example. Sometimes when you bow down before God, you got to bow down before a brethren to help them. Now, you're not physically bowing down, but you're humbling yourself so you can help a brother or sister in Christ. Thus, now you're bowing before God. Listen, you don't go like that Pharisee in your confession. Oh, look how great I am. Look how wonderful I am. I tithe and I fast. And I'm, I'm not like that guy over there. That guy over there wouldn't even lift his head to heaven and said, Lord God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And God said, that one was washed and clean. I met many Christians. Well, they call themselves Christians. I don't know. I'm, you know, when I get to heaven, my man, Jesus. I'm going to walk up to Jesus, high five him. Idiot. <laughs> Again, that kind of have thine own way. No, Lord, it's me, myself, and I. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Wounded and weary. Help me. I pray. I'm going to go run to the doctor. I'm going to run to alcohol. I'm going to head to my shrink. I'm going to run. To, I'm going to run to a mortgage. I'm going to get a second mortgage. I'm going to ask Pharaoh and Herod to, to help me. What about God? Listen, you're sick. Jesus said, "They that are a whole have no need of physician, but they that are sick." But before you go running to the doctor, have you? Sought the Lord? Lord, you made me. You got an ailment in your body? Who do you run to? Asa went to the doctors and God said, fine, they're not going to do nothing for you. That woman that had the bleeding of 12 years went to all the doctors and the doctors bled her dry of her purse. Then she came to Jesus. Have thine own way. I'm going to come to the Lord. I'm going to leave the world behind. And listen, he may come to you and say, you got to go to the doctor. Hey, I'll, I'll bless you with a loan. But did we or do we go to the Lord first? Imagine that lump of clay on the wheel. Walking off the wheel and the potter's like, where are you going? I, I, I got to go get some more clay for myself. I need help. I'm the one that made you. I'm the one that's working. Uh, you don't know what you're doing. And when we don't go to God in, for help, we're telling God you're incapable. 
Listen, like I said, I, I'm looking for a wife. God says she has to be saved. So, and she has to be more than saved. I mean, she has to love the Lord. And do, I'm trusting to the Lord. Now, I'm looking for outside advantages, but I'm looking to God. My finances, I'm looking to God. My health, I'm definitely looking for God because there's no, nothing else is going to help. Power, all power, surely is thine. Idiot Christians go run to, you know, to these superheroes. And they run to these video games and you bounce on this level and, and you touch this, you get power and, and you, you, you know, you eat this thing and you get power and power in the movies. And what about the power of God? You realize how powerful God is? You realize in the Bible it says Genesis chapter 1, and God said, let there be light. Boom, there was light. Let the waters uh, be uh, division, separated from, from the land, and it was so. Let the waters bring, God said, let the waters bring uh, abundant life, and let, let there be falls flying, and it was. You realize we have a God that spoke creation? And you can't even get the public schools to speak about creation in their classes. I am saved by the power of God, the power of God that God suffered and died. God died. There are gods in Greek and Roman mythology that could never and will not ever die. My God died. My God allowed the creation to beat the crap out of him. My God went into hell and deposited my sins, crossed that gulf that Abraham said no man can cross, released the captives of Abraham's bosom, and my God came out of that tomb three days and three nights, all according to the scriptures. Let's see the power of the Pope do that. Let's see your pastor do that. Let's see you do that. Friend, if I die, the Lord tarries. I'm staying in the grave, this body, until the Lord calls me. And, and, and if I die, and those who died in Christ, when the rapture happens, the power is, he's going to, dead in Christ shall rise first. Well, what if what if what if I what if I was on a shipwreck and I became fish food? You'll get your body back together. I have an amputated toe from from diabetes. God knows where that toe is. I don't. God does. There are women who have had their breasts removed because of cancer. God knows where it is. There have been people who in in, in wartime, in battles, have lost body parts in battle. God knows where it is, and he'll call it all. That's power. That's power. Power beyond a video game. Touch me and heal me. Savior divine. I don't know if she had an ailment. But don't we all have ailments? Oh, I've got this ailment and God didn't heal me. He will. When we get to New Jerusalem, we'll all be healed. How's that? That's power. We go into a place. No more tears. No more sorrow. No more death. No more pain. No more suffering. That's power. You're not going to get that in a video game. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Hold o'er my being absolute sway. Hold me, God. You know what happens when the potter is working that pottery? He's holding. 
you're not going to fall on the floor. No one's going to come and steal that piece of, no, no, that's mine. I'm working it. Go get your own. And you're in the hands of the, of the, of the father. Oh, you got that little twig in there. Let me get that out. Oh, oh, this is a little bad. This is a little more needs a little work. Fill me with thy spirit. Now, we have this Holy Spirit when we're saved, yes. But we need to be filled with that Holy Spirit as we go in life. There are many Christians out there, they got the Holy Spirit, but their gasoline tank has been so dry, they don't even have the fumes. And they're not going to go anywhere with the Lord because they're dry. And then there, there are some Christians out there, man, the Holy Spirit is so, so filled in their tank, it's overflowing and you walk by and went, whoa, man, you get, you know, you ever get there with gasoline, you, you're pumping your car and, you, and gas spills and it's just for about a mile, two miles, oh man, that gas spills, phew, next time, will you be careful doing the gas? Those are people who really fill with the Spirit. It's just your whole life. There are Christians who don't get filled with the Spirit. They fill themselves with the world. And there is a Spirit of the world. There's also a Spirit of self. And when you've got any other Spirit but the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit just backs off and says, okay, you take control. you got to get your hands off the wheel and let the Lord take it. Fill with thy spirit till all shall see. Christ only, always living in me. Now look around. I see Christians pathetic. I wish you don't even say you're a Christian. I wish you shut up. Don't say a word. What about you? What about me? You know, like I said, I preach on the streets and they hate my guts. Many of them hate my guts. The Bible said many. But there are some there, hey, I, I, I love what you're doing. Man, that, what you do. And you, you inspire me. You encourage No, not me. The Holy Spirit. You've got to be filled with the Spirit. It doesn't happen automatically. And you can be drained of the Holy Spirit. And you can replace the Holy Spirit with any other kind of spirit. And then you're just going to, you're going to fold up and die. You're going to be of no use. I mean, can you imagine? Let's say, uh, whatever container. And it's in the refrigerator. And you're thinking it's, it's oh, it's going to be ice cold. You're out working in the yard and it's hot. And you, you open up that refrigerator and you say, oh, it's got oh, ice cold water. Or ice cold Coke. Or ice cold, you know, lem lemonade. Or ice cold uh, iced tea. Whatever you expect it to be. Like, oh. You grab that and you, and you pour it into a glass or... You do it the old-fashioned way, you just, and you and you go put it to your lips, and you take a couple. It's vinegar. Ah, oh, no. It's not what God wanted. Jesus said on the cross, "I thirst," and they gave him vinegar. Christian. Christ may want from you water, new wine, and you may be giving him vinegar, and he doesn't taste it, and he doesn't drink it. And a lot of the scene church age, oh, I want it to be cold, or I want ice cold Coca-Cola. 
carry Coca-Cola with me. Or you know what? I want some good old hot chicken broth. When I lived up north, we we shoveled the snow and all that. My wife would have would be done getting there done. I come in the house and she would have a cup of hot chicken broth. The cube does the best. Not the kings. And when you've been outside, not the, those little cubes. She would smash them up and she make me some hot chicken broth. Mm. Now I had I had taken chicken broth. My work I've had over here, my work. I'm going, I'm taking a cup and Oh, that's cold. Oh. That guy could take it in the microwave. I've been in the car. I've gotten out of church, getting the car on my way home. Oh, there's a can of soda. All oh, right. Oh, that's hot. Oh. Is that what you are to God? Because God says, cold or hot. What are you? Cold or hot is refreshing. Lukewarm? <laughs> Have thine own way, Lord. Can you sing this hymn? Have thine own way, Lord. I can't even think of it. Can you just sing this hymn or can you say, Lord God, we're going to sing Have Thine Own Way in our church. Lord, not only am I going to sing it, Lord, I'm going to make it my prayer. Can you make this hymn your prayer? Can you look at the words of this, this hymn? And Lord, I just don't want to sing it. I want you to do it. Many won't do that because they know God may answer that prayer. Maybe that's why I'm going through some of the troubles and problems with my life right now. Because I've asked God to, to check me out. I've asked God to search me. I've asked God to mold me. And it hurts. And there's sometimes as the piece of pottery, you, you call out to the potter, hey! And he, he don't answer you. And the potter never asked the piece of pottery, clay, are you happy? Are you pleased? Does that feel good? He doesn't. And yet Jesus said, cast your cares upon him, for he careth for us. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. you got to be filled with the Spirit. If you're not filled with the Spirit, love, joy, peace has got to come artificially. 